So this uh, scripture, uh, let's see. Okay, so we'll, we'll start. Yeah, uh, this is during the Ohio Dharma class. The Ohio Dharma class. Um, Okay, so just like in any Dharma class that we have, um, the first, you can say, the first saint who, who channels and, and gives us, writes us a scripture is um, the chief examiner of the three realms. Okay, so, uh, and that's done through his sand writing. Uh, and so this is what um, you can either, well, before you get your hand out, you can look up on the screen. Uh, so, yeah. Not that loud. Hmm? Uh, yeah. I can hear. You can hear. They can hear. No, 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 no. The speaker's in the back, so oh, that's really? fine. Yeah. Can uh, you hear? Can you yeah, hear you can hear in the back, right? Uh, is it clear? You can hear it here? In the back? Can you hear? Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, so, okay. So he starts off. Says, uh, oh, okay. So, uh, I'll skip the next one. Um, let's see. Starts off. Okay, this is where it starts. Alright. It says, Tao is natural and without motivation. Right? Tao is mercifulness and joyful giving. Tao is abiding by the rules, proprieties, and precepts or principles. Right? Tao is acting in accordance with affinity. So, <clears throat> uh, you, you've heard of, you know, like, we talk a lot about Wu Wei, which, you know, Lao Tzu, when you, if you've heard of Lao Tzu and know about uh, the Tao from Lao, reading his philosophy, if you will, uh, the principles, Wu Wei means acting from, it's our true nature. Everything is following the, the true nature, okay? So it's, everything is natural uh, and it's without motivation. So if you look at the, the universe, everything happens according to well, we just say it's, it's nature, right? It's, it's natural. Okay, there are certain laws that they follow. Certain, uh, in, in the case of, you know, the, the physical universe, there are physical laws. Uh, the laws of physics, laws of nature that they follow. Now, we also follow, we also, as human beings, we also have, or any living being, they also have uh, certain laws of nature that they follow. Okay, so humans, what's the law that we follow is, you can say it's our conscience. Okay, that, that's kind of, uh, and you know, you can, they, various, you know, sages and saints, they use different ways to talk about it. Um, so like Confucius talks about it, say, saying it's our conscience or our uh, virtues, right? Uh, he talks about our five constant virtues, right? Uh, which is benevolence, right, uh, righteousness, propriety, uh, wisdom, and faith, or, or yeah, true sincerity. Okay, so, um, so these are, uh, so if we just follow that, so uh, we talk a lot about, you know, following our true nature, our Buddha nature, as opposed to our human nature. Our human nature is subject to emotions, subject to, you can say, uh, biases, discrimination, um, whereas the human, the, the Buddha nature does not, or our true nature does not. And so uh, when we conduct ourselves, um, when we think about things, uh, when, when we say things, we should always just follow our conscience, follow our true nature, all right? Uh, so that's, then there's really no, no motivation, no ego, no self, okay? That's, that's really the, the, the idea, all right? Uh, the Tao is mercifulness um, also, okay? So mercifulness is to uh, give others joy, right? To give others joy and also to relieve their suffering. Um, so that's, that's really uh, what it means to be merciful. And, uh, and also joyful giving, you know, when we give, uh, give to others or give of ourselves, uh, it is, we do it joyfully, we don't uh, do it grudgingly or uh, in any other way, right? So it's, it's just that true love through compassion, okay, that we, we always, that we are giving of ourselves and giving to others, all right? Uh, so again, you know, there is, if we can recognize there's no self, then uh, that's, that's uh, you know, then, then you're, we're, we're there. <laughs> there is no self. Um, okay, so 
Tao is also abiding by the rules, right? Rules, proprieties, precepts, principles. Um, like I said earlier, the whole universe is based on these natural laws, laws of nature, a lot the physical laws. Uh, there are also, you know, uh, laws governing the uh, living beings. Um, and so, if you follow those laws, then that is following the Tao. Um, so we, we can't just do anything that we want uh, without any, um, uh, you know, any way we like. Okay, so that is like following our emotions when, especially when we also, uh, you know, let's say <laughs> uh, we we drunk, we're drunk, or or even if we're not drunk, it's just that when we get emotional, then we lose ourselves. We, when we say we lose ourselves, is is we no longer follow our true self, our conscience. All right, so that that's really um, so. Uh, there are all these natural laws in terms of the, the human, uh, you know, obviously we have human made laws, but uh, those are not really necessary. Um, they, those are there to, to guide people until they realize their own conscience and follow their conscience, which is following their true Buddha nature. Okay, so the, the natural, the virtues, the inherent virtues that we already have. All right, so uh, that is. Uh, you can say those are all the, the laws, uh, the, the rules, or the proprieties, or the precepts, or principles. Okay, so uh, now, of course, we also need some more, uh, some specific uh, things like the precepts, that, like the five precepts, or, or you know, the ten wholesome deeds, or things like that, that we perform to further, uh, you can say, kind of discipline us, or ourselves, uh, or to guide ourselves. Uh, to be on that right track and those those you could say those external uh, rules or proprieties are there to help us find our true nature find our conscience and follow that conscience that Buddha nature right uh, and then so finally Tao is acting in accordance with affinity affinity um, we follow our affinity now our affinity affinity is something it's like a connection it's like a uh, it's something that we've established previously, okay? Uh, you know, it could be previously in this life or, or previously in, in previous lives. Um, so something, you know, uh, perhaps we've, uh, sometimes we, we call it, you know, like maybe some karma, but, but it's really, uh, let's say we did something, we did a good deed, we helped someone before, or we said something good to someone before. Um, and, uh, you know that is yeah you can say that's also a good deed right uh, and at the same time we establish an affinity with that person uh, okay so there is that connection and that affinity if we establish the good affinity um, uh, and we and again if we do it without motivation <laughs> okay so then that's a way then then you can say that's kind of like a, a Buddha affinity right we, we you always say like the Buddhas they always establish good affinity with all sentient beings and so that the purpose is not to get any benefit out of that um, because like in humans uh, in the human world we, we tend to oh you know I do something good to you and then uh, ex and then kind of expect something in return okay uh, but that's uh, we, we're not talking about that it's just uh, for in the Buddha and or enlightening being enlightened beings point of view Establishing good affinity is so so that in the future, uh, you, you have because you already have that connection, that affinity that you will probably can meet again at a time where, uh, let's say we you know let's say uh, just like uh, you know our holy teacher Jigon Buddha uh, has an affinity with us, okay, with all of us, and that's why we are here today to be able to receive this Tao, um, or maybe it's indirectly it's maybe it's not um, Qigong Buddha himself but we have an affinity with any of the Buddhas or uh, any of the, the uh, you can say our predecessors those who come before us uh, patriarchs any of them um, because of that affinity connection allows us to uh, have this opportunity to, to encounter this Tao to receive this Tao right and to cultivate uh, so that that's the purpose uh, and so for us in this world today um, yes, we try to introduce the Tao to people, um, but if, if they're not willing, um, that's okay. 
Uh, anytime we establish a good affinity with people uh, in the future, there will be an opportunity where they may have that chance again to, to receive this Tao. Okay, so that, that's really the purpose, planting that seed, that good seed. Uh, hopefully it bears fruit in the future, All right? Okay, yeah. So to the last line. Yeah. Okay, so I think it also means uh, wherever we are in this lifetime, it's all the result of uh, what we did in our past lives. Uh, for example, we are, if we are in a very uh, high position or we are very rich, um, you know, it's, it's also a blessing that we cultivated from the previous lives. But just don't get you know, complacent or we just you know, uh, waste all of this blessing. You know, we should try to help other people try to uh, share with them, be more giving. Um, but if we are poor, and we should not be like jealous of people who are rich. Um, it just means if we are poor, uh, you know, kind of uh, down and out at this lifetime. It reflects what we do in our past. So we have to realize that we have to do, be to, to do better in this lifetime. Um, and then the second one, Sri Yifun. It also means that we do something in our role. For example, in the temple, if we are just a staff member, we do something that befits a staff member. We don't try to <laughs> like take, make decisions for a transmitter. Uh, when, when we are in the you know, workplace, we also do something that fits our position. Yeah. Do something that's appropriate uh, for our, you know, our job responsibilities and things like that. We don't, you know, kind of cross the boundary. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Yeah, thanks, uh, Virginia. Yeah, yeah. that kind of follows, actually, from the previous line, that, that, that these rules, and there's kind of an order, a sense of order that we follow. And so uh, we also, um, you know, maintain that order, you know, um, do things within within our the scope of our duties. Uh, don't, you know, try to step on people's toes and go beyond, all right? Okay, uh, and then we can move on. All right, let's see. Yeah. All right, so then uh, after that, um, you can say the, the preface. Uh, then <coughs> the, the, okay, so then he announces himself, right? Uh, so I it says, I am the chief examiner of the three realms <coughs> by Lamu. Uh, Lamu is, is, you can say it's God. Uh, uh, God's order or decree or authority you know, I come to this temple and make obeisance to Lamu, okay, so, uh, and it asks how, how everyone is. Uh, please quiet the mind and remain still and hear and, and okay, understand his words, all right? Um, all right. So, okay, so then it goes on to uh, compose the, the formal scripture. Uh, it's basically it's seven <coughs> seven characters and seven characters per line. Uh, <coughs> so this is kind of a Chinese poetry uh, because it, it rhymes on each each of those seven. Okay, they all have the same sound at at the end. Okay, so uh, so the first line says universal propagation of Tao is available now. Heaven makes Tao available to save all souls. Okay, uh, universal propagation started uh, like 19. Well, roughly 1905, you know, beginning of the 20th century, um, with our what we call our 17th patriarch, our grand patriarch. Okay, that's the <coughs> incarnation of Mila uh, Maitreya Buddha. Okay, so uh, that's you know because before that, before the 20th century, uh, only those mm, you can say very few people can uh, receive uh, receive those three treasures. Okay. Uh, but starting with <coughs> around the 20th century, which is also what we call this white period, uh, that it's universal uh, propagation of the Tao. So uh, that anyone who has that affinity, right? We talk about that affinity, uh, can re has that opportunity to receive the Tao. Um, and so, so it's available. And you know, heaven. You can say that heaven is very merciful. Uh, this is <coughs> everything is, happens according to I guess you can say a time time <coughs> this is like a, we are in the fall you know the, the fall season right so it's already s spring summer has passed already and then so now we're in a new fall uh, so the fall is the harvest and therefore uh, you know a lot of things happening here uh, in the harvest they're, they're trying to collect collect you know <laughs> so remember I said bear fruit right earlier right 
you harvest the fruits, okay, so from the past. So therefore, this is the time where we have that universal uh, propagation of Tao to save uh, all those who have that affinity. Um, <coughs> and then so it, get, and it goes on to say, to, tr to transcend the cycle of birth and death, right, or reincarnation, right, to, to return to our original position in heaven is for real, okay. It's, um, <coughs> so this is not something that, oh, uh, you know, we, people talk about, oh, we can go to heaven, uh, but it, it is for real, and we know it. <coughs> Many people, you know, Tao cultivators in this, you know, this, this past hundred years, <coughs> Uh, we know that they've returned to heaven through, again, through these channeling uh, uh, where the Buddhas uh, and saints told us, you know, that certain person who's passed away, they've returned to uh, their position in heaven, okay? Um, so, <clears throat> so this is something that's uh, such a great matter, right? This, this being able to transcend life and death, right? This is not something that anyone can just just do achieve through knowledge or anything like that um, all right so it's something so that's always something very special to receive the Tao to receive these three treasures today um, to be able to transcend the cycle of life and death all right this has not happened before I mean basically our very few people were able to achieve this before all right <clears throat> uh, so this this great matter shakes heaven and earth uh, the enlightened masters our holy teachers bear the mission of universal salvation. All right, so uh, our holy teachers, our enlightening masters, um, our Jigong Buddha, Jigong Living Buddha, and Yerhoi Bodhisattva. Okay, uh, also they were born, at, you know, within the last century as our 18th or patriarch and matriarch. Okay, uh, and when they received the mandate in, you know, say 1930. Uh, that's what <coughs> the, you can say roughly the start of what we call universal salvation. Okay, so, so we just talked about universal propagation of Tao. And now universal salvation is of the three realms. <coughs> okay, is uh, not just humans who have affinity can receive the Tao, but spirits, spirits in the divas, okay, in the celestial heaven, and also the spirits in the underworld. Okay, <coughs> they can also be uplifted. Right, transcend this like life and death cycles. Now, normally you have to be human, you have to be alive, right? So, so this is very special. Uh, so, though again, those who are deceased, who are spirits, only those who have affinity. Again, affinity is very important. Affinity to with those who are can receive the de the three treasures, receive the Tao, and be transcend uh, uplifted. Okay, so. So again, that's uh, this is something that's never happened in at least not in this cycle. Okay, uh, all right. Uh, let's go on here. Um, well, this is also uh, the reason why we're <coughs> we have the hero of salvation. It's also in Buddhism they say that we are entering the Dharma ending <coughs> period. Dharma ending, which is male Fa Wei. Dharma ending. You know, it's not yet completely none, but it's ending. The Dharma is ending. So that's just a, yeah, more process. Yeah, so that's why they also see. It. it just means that uh, you know, eventually, you know, it will end, and then that means you will long run with the other book to see the treasures. So, so that's that's also what it means. Okay. <coughs> yeah. Thanks. Um, yeah. That uh, again. Yeah. It, it's. You know, religion has, you know, run its course, if you will. Religion has run its course. Religion, the purpose of religion is to guide people back to the right track. Okay, follow their conscience, follow their true nature, uh, until one day this Tao is available. Okay, so, uh, so that's really the purpose of religion. Eventually, the religions during this final uh, period that we're in, final stage, uh, religions will all return back to this Tao. Because the Tao is the source, the root. Okay. Uh, okay. So uh, then it go, goes on here. Those with affinity can receive that point transmission. Okay. Receive the Tao. Receive the three treasures. Uh, true cultivation and refinement of character is a matter of diligent effort. All right. So <coughs> um, not only do we just receive the Tao. Okay. Receiving the Tao. Receiving the three treasures is is obviously that's a, a big step <laughs> towards uh, uh, transcending both life and death. But then we have to cultivate. Cultivating. Uh, means 
to you can say it's correcting our ourselves you know so that our our human nature if you will follows our buddha nature our true nature um so getting rid of our bad temper getting rid of our um faulty conduct uh faulty behavior um correcting those uh and also doing good deeds helping others and then especially doing it with you know the uh, uh uh, without motivation, you know, so that's uh, true merit, okay, uh, and cultivating our virtues, okay, practicing our virtues, so th <coughs> those are the things that we need to do is cultivate, uh, we need to put in the effort, um, don't think that, oh, you know, I'll, I got this ticket to heaven already with, with the three treasures, but, uh, and then I can do whatever I want, uh, um, y y you know, then what that, <laughs> what, what that becomes is that we just, uh, we just, we're just visiting heaven, <laughs> and then we're going to come back uh, and then to, to complete our cultivation. So, uh, so we need to, uh, you know, the Buddhas tell us we can, in this one lifetime, we can achieve Buddhahood or sainthood. Um, but we just have, we have to work at it, all right? Work hard. Okay. Um, and, all right. All right, so next. Uh, let's see. All right, so we must not have false appearances or pretenses. Um, that original face is unblemished. Okay, so again, when we do things, don't it's not superficial. Okay, we're not just doing it for show. Uh, and <clears throat> so, you know, it has to come from that true heart, come from the heart, deep from the heart. All right, uh, and it's sincere uh, that we're genuine uh, when we do things. Uh, like we always say. You know, our, our words and actions have to match what's in our heart and mind, okay? So uh, as long as our heart and mind is in the right place, it's proper, it's following our conscience, uh, then our words and actions should follow, right? <clears throat> our original face, which is our true nature, our true self, uh, it's, it's unblemished or perfect, okay? So our Buddha nature, our true nature is perfect. Uh, it's just that, why, why are we not perfect? It's because we're in this... We have a physical form. We're a part of this, not just the physical realm, but also the, the realm of the, I don't know, chi, the, the energy. Um, and that realm, the, well, this realm of yin yang, tai chi, okay, where there's this duality, everything's relative. Uh, there's, uh, within that, then it's no longer perfect, okay, you can say, uh, in the sense that we, we can, we start discriminating, we start likes liking, right, <laughs> good and bad. Uh, when we start doing that, then, then it's no longer that perfect self, okay? That true nature has, has no duality, okay? It's just oneness, uh, oneness with everything. <coughs> okay, so, uh, so fine or marvelous and sincere and cordial, okay? So gentle and, and honest or upright. Um, okay, and, it will, will, uh, and then the next one it says, even in destitution or haste, always preserve or maintain that divine nature. Okay, so uh, this divine nature of ours, you know, that Buddha nature, that true nature, is so fine, so marvelous, and it's so sincere, um, uh, so cordial, so kind, so warm, uh, gentle, right? It's, it's upright. And so that's, that's like the perfect person, you know, the, 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 we, when we talk about a person who's very... Um, who's like that, <laughs> they're like a saint, okay? So, uh, so that's what we tr strive to be, because that's who we really are, originally, anyways. That's how we were. Uh, it's just that through our attachments and desires that we've lost, we've, you can say we've lost that, We're, we don't show it anymore. Uh, we, what we show is, is our, you know, uh, likes and dislikes, and our discriminating and biased mind, okay? Uh, so we need to let go of those, let go of the attachments, and, and reduce our desires to get back to that unblemished self, right? Uh, and so no matter, you know, what kind of situations we encounter when we're, you know, difficult times, hardships, destitution, um, or, you know, we, we're in a hurry to, we, we're trying to do things expediently, uh, we should not forget that true nature. Don't forget our virtues. Um, always maintain that for our virtues, follow our conscience. Don't do things, uh, says, oh, you know, um, uh, just because of the situation, I'm, I'm going to kind of break the rules a little bit. Uh, we should always follow the proprieties, follow the rules, uh, those precepts, those principles. Never try not to break those principles. All right. Um, 
Okay. And then, let's see, we want to constantly inspect, uh, well that's the direct translation, discern or to be able to, to distinguish um, really what's, what's true, uh, what, what the true reality is, okay? We will not be confused and lose our way in this colorful or distracting world, <coughs> right? This world has a lot to offer. Um, there's a lot out there, um, you know, that uh, gives pleasure to our senses, to what, you know, our sight and hearing and taste uh, and touch. Uh, so basically, all these things, you can say, they are temptations or distractions, right? So uh, we want to introspect um, to, to be able to also dis distinguish, you know, know what's true and false, right? Uh, in the Tao, when we understand these principles, understand the truth. What's the truth? The truth is everlasting, right? The truth never changes, right? That's the definition of the truth. So everything in this world, you can say all the forms are in that, by that definition, they're not true, they're false, okay? Because they're changeable. Yeah, what's permanent? Yeah, they're changeable, they're not eternal, okay? So, uh, but what is permanent are the principles, right? So all these physical forms, this universe that I mentioned earlier, they follow certain natural laws. Those laws are eternal, those are truths, okay? But the forms themselves are changeable according to those truths. So. So again, we need to understand that. And when we can understand that, then we follow, uh, we can realize, oh, then there's no need to pursue all these material things, all these things that are constantly changing. You know, today I can get something, tomorrow I lose it, or it, it breaks, or, you know, whatever. Something happens to it, and it's no longer what it was the day before. So, so those are all false. Uh, so, you know, same thing with our lives. We're constantly changing. Uh, everything is changing in our lives. Uh, so that is not, uh, we have to kind of take a step back, take the view, uh, and a longer term view uh, to see what is eternal. It's our true nature, our Buddha nature, that's eternal, right? Our soul. And so that, that's why when we die, after we die, our soul, our true nature still exists, right? And it's just going to continue on. Uh, and where it goes next depends on what we do in this life, right? Yeah. Uh, yesterday, trans, uh, senior transmitter shared with me something. Um, we talk about the illusory world as the hua hua sujie, which is the flower world. Well, it is that flower, they are transient. Today, they are you know, blossoming. A few days later, they might wither and become very ugly. But what's really eternal is the seed or the fruit. Okay. And Transmit and Jin write a story about you know one of the seed or the I think it's a lotus seed that was entombed thousands of years ago um, together with an emperor. And what they found out is they planted that, that lotus seed and actually sprouts. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so Buddhas and Saints uh, kept referring all you know, the good people as the seeds, you know, that they are going to. Um, Cherish and then bring into the next proper. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> next cycle. <clears throat> yeah, we're, uh, you know, we, you know, seeds, yeah, yeah. When you talk about seeds, seeds, seeds are interesting because you can say that as long as, you know, uh, the conditions are right, you know, you preserve it, um, you know, the life is still in there. The potential for life is still in there. So seeds can last. Know, thousands of years or even you know longer right uh, as long as you know it, do, it doesn't get destroyed whatever uh, you plant it give it the right conditions it'll grow again uh, so that's interesting so that that's that's like our Buddha nature is like that it, it's always there okay uh, and so uh, so yeah that, that's a good good uh, <laughs> analogy all right seeds okay so uh, so next it says uh, establish Mm, okay, establish an unwavering aspiration that shoots up to heaven, right? Forehead vigorously, uh, in other words, uh, uh, from beginning to end. Okay, so uh, so we all have to now that we kind of know the way, or, or we kind of have a, a better understanding of what life is about, uh, why we're here. Uh, understand that you know we should have you know a goal, an aspiration, a goal. Um, you know where are we going? <coughs> what are we going to end up? Uh, 
you know, we again, not we don't just want to transcend this cycle of life and death, you know, to avoid the suffering. Uh, it's also to help others avoid the suffering too. Okay, so uh, because everyone, all sentient beings, all living beings, you know, they're all here. Yeah, you can say we're all here because of our karma. Okay, uh, you know, karma, or you can say vows. Okay, if if like a Buddha, uh, they're they're here because of their vow. Okay, but uh, most of us, we're we're here because of karma. Uh, we have to fulfill that karma. Um, or you know, in case of like a Buddha, they fulfill their vows. Uh, so that's something that um, uh, we all need to strive for. Uh, so it's not just again, we if we can forget ourself, then think of everyone as being part of me. Uh, so obviously, if I want to save myself, then I want to save others too. Uh, and so that's a bodhisattva or a Buddha. Is or a saint, you say, you know, is interested in wants to save everyone because there is no separation at that point. They are not separated from, you know, it's, there's no uh, us, me, and you. Okay, there's no separation. Um, uh, we are all one, and therefore, uh, you know, to save myself is to save you. So, uh, so therefore, you know, that or to save you is to save me. Right. So. Uh, so that is something, you know, something we should think about. We should always, <clears throat> in other words, don't be selfish, be selfless. Uh, when we are selfless, um, if we don't think of our, for ourselves and just thinking of, of helping others, naturally, heaven, you know, the Buddhas and saints will help us, okay? Uh, so we don't have to worry about that. Um, okay, and then never give up. So, you know, we... we from this point onward, right, from the point we receive the Tao, or point when we start understanding to when the moment that we take our last breath, we should never give up. We should always be forging ahead in that direction towards our goal, right? Because uh, we don't want to waste this lifetime, okay? So uh, in this life, uh, you know, if we make progress uh, and then we, we certainly we start backtracking, uh, you, know, you know, maybe we won't, we won't achieve our goal and uh, who knows what will happen to us in the next life, okay? We, we have to start over, all right? So that, that would be a waste. So, uh, you know, take this, every opportunity that we have in this life to, to move forward, to progress. And don't think that, oh, you know, I'm young, you know, I have plenty of time. Hey, <laughs> those, those who die are not necessarily the old people, okay? <laughs> Young people die too, right? So, uh, and young people get sick, right? People have accidents, diseases, anything can happen. We don't know. We don't know. We can't predict what's going to happen to us. Uh, it all depends on our karma, what we do. But we can change our fate, all right? Our destiny, we can determine our own destiny by what we do now, okay? So, uh, so as long as we have that aspiration, you can say we, we set a goal or we make a vow, right, to do something good, uh, heaven will help us too. As long as we're sincere, we put in the effort. Um, okay, so aiming for, for, for perfection is the proper way or approach. Uh, restore the innate ability and knowledge, right? So, uh, you know, as cultivation, yeah, it, even though our Buddha nature, our true nature, is, you can say it's, it's perfect, okay? Uh, yeah, so we should aim to be like, you know, follow our Buddha nature exactly, and then so then we are perfect, okay? So. As a human being, of course, we're in this human world, we suffer s some influences. If we can somehow uh, cut off those influences, detach ourselves from the world, uh, so to speak, and, and by basically reducing our desires or getting rid of our desires, then we can cut off those attachments and uh, basically not be influenced by the world. Okay, so uh, that true nature is it's what's influenced by by the world uh, is our human nature, human heart, human mind. Okay, um, so uh, once we we need to kind of cut that off um, in in order to achieve that perfection. <clears throat> the perfection, you know, is just following our Buddha nature, um, and you know, it, it it is just it's just so marvelous. It's it's indescribable. Okay, that Buddha nature, that innate ability and knowledge. Okay, that knowledge is, is not you know the knowledge that we talk about. It's like our wisdom. That wisdom, 
uh, ultimate wisdom and awareness. Okay, so that's uh, when we can truly become enlightened, like the Buddha, right? Achieve that level. Uh, that is, you know, infinite wisdom, infinite, uh, infinite awareness, right? Um, okay. So today it says, uh, heaven and man come gather together. Okay, so, uh, you know, he's talking, this is obviously this is during the Dharma class. So, uh, heaven and man gather together. It's greatly overflowing with happiness and auspiciousness. Um, yeah, you know, we talk about, you know, heaven and man uh, as one. Okay, so, and that's true because we have that Buddha nature, that true nature. Um, that is part of, you can say, that is part of heaven. That is part of uh, God, right? Uh, so we are connected. We are one. Uh, it's just that because we don't see it that way, uh, we're confused. We think we're separate. Um, but, uh, but in this particular case, because also the channeling, um, uh, you know, we can see it. Um, but the Buddhas and saints, they're always around us too, all right? So we just don't see them normally. Um, and so obviously it's a very happy and auspicious occasion um, when there is this gathering of heaven and man. So it says, virtuous brother, you know, referring to the people in the Dharma class, virtuous brothers and sisters, it is not easy, right? Cherish this great opportunity. Um, um, so again, you know, the, the way the Buddhas refer to us, even though they, they're already enlightened, right? The, 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 and they've achieved uh, you know, transcendence. Um, you know, they, they still uh, refer to us, <laughs> who have not achieved yet, you know, as virtuous, you know, brothers and sisters, considered, well, he, especially him, okay, this, this uh, chief examiner of the three realms, he calls us brothers and sisters because he, he was also, uh, well, he was a son <laughs> of uh, our holy teacher in one, in one lifetime, okay, and so, so he, he considers us as, you know, equals. Um, because um, we're all the disciples of our holy teacher, right? <clears throat> uh, so it says, um, and this opportunity, okay, this not just receiving the Tao, but, you know, attending a Dharma class, that opportunity um, to be there uh, is very precious, so should cherish that time. Uh, it says, thank Lamu, or God's mercy and grace. Thank holy teachers for covering us with their great virtue. Uh, Again, you know, we hear a lot. Uh, we and say we say in Chinese, "Ganshe right? It's it's to thank heaven's grace and the virtues of the masters or our teachers. Okay, um, because without the grace of heaven and the, the virtues of our holy teachers, uh, their mercy, um, we probably wouldn't be here today. To we wouldn't be able to receive the Tao or we wouldn't be able to cultivate. Right? Um, okay. Also, thank our introducers. For their care and eff concern and efforts, right? Thank the virtues of our ancestors. All right. So again, that affinity, right, that we have with our introducer, right? If it wasn't for our introducer, we wouldn't hear about the Tao. We wouldn't know about this temple. We wouldn't, you know, uh, have received the Tao, right? So they brought us in. So it's that connection, that affinity. Again, it's very important. Um, so we have to thank them um, because they saved your soul. <laughs> Uh, all right, so so that that's like wow. How do you pay back that? Uh, we can only pay it forward, right? Helping others, save other people's soul as well. All right, so that's the only way to do it. Um, and also our ancestors, you know, obviously, you know, maybe who knows? Our ancestors, they're, they may be good and bad, but overall, they have some virtue, and that's why we're we're here today. That we have this opportunity to receive the Tao and to cultivate. Well, well that's why it's cumulative. Yeah, virtue. it's cumulative. Yeah. Because it's not just one action. Yeah. Right? It's, it's all <laughs> right. And it's cumulative over, you know, <laughs> down this whole calper or maybe even beyond. You know? Right. Okay. Uh, and then also, you know, thank our own inspired self, all right? Uh, thank the gathering of good affinities and karma. All right. So uh, obviously, you know, we can pat ourselves on the back a little bit and say that, yeah, you know, as well, you know we're willing and we're sincere uh, in receiving this Tao and to cultivate. Uh, and to learn, uh, then, you know, that, that's not everyone, you know, does that. I mean, a lot of people receive the Tao, but, you know, probably, I, I, I don't know, 10% or less, you know, people who are really cultivating, okay? So those are, you can say, the truly the, the inspired people. Um, so if you're here today, then, you know, congratulations. Um, 
you know. Yeah, so the, um, you can say that's having that affinity or that foundation, okay? Having that foundation, without that foundation that we built up in the past, uh, we wouldn't be able to have this opportunity, okay? Or we would just, we're just not ready, okay? It'd be difficult, all right? So, um, all right, so inquire and seek the true meaning of life, right? Listen to class with single-minded concentration, okay? So, uh, you know, the true meaning of life, right? That's, well, that happens to be one of the topics in the Dharma class, but uh, ultimately, what Tao is about, or what cultivation is about, it's, we have to understand why we're here. What's what's life about? Right? It's not just about the pursuit, you know, what capitalism or the Western uh, a society wants you to believe is more stuff, <laughs> getting more stuff and more money, more whatever, mm -hmm. uh, fame, everything. Uh, that's not the true meaning of life, right? Because in the end, you lose it all, right? It's not yours anyways to take. So. Uh, the only thing that you can take are your merits and virtue. That's what you keep for yourself, and that's really what's yours. No one can take that away from you. All right, so, so we have to understand why, why, what's the purpose of life. All right. Uh, let go of the self and the ego, right? Be humble and modest. All right. Absorbing the proper knowledge can clear up any doubts. Uh, Again, I mentioned earlier about you know that self, that false self or that ego. We have to let go of that. Um, be selfless. Um, don't think of always me, me, me. Right? The that the me, me, me. You know, part of that me, me, me has has all the biases, uh, things like that. Right? Discrimination. Uh, so uh, we need to be humble. Humble and modest to be able to learn, right? Uh, if we think we know it all, right? Especially very well-educated people or those who have, uh, uh, you know, a strong skill set, right? They might think, oh, I, I know a lot. I don't need to know these, you know, other principles and things like that. Um, but those, are, that's all part of that self, that ego. Okay, so uh, we need to let go of that. Be, be humble. When we can be humble, then we can learn. Uh, then we can really uh, improve ourselves. Right, um, and learning is important because we may have questions, we have doubts in our mind about uh, what's the truth, what's the Tao, what's what's all what's this all about. Uh, so we need to learn, um, and having that, being humble and having an open mind, we can then learn uh, all these truths and principles. Okay, uh, keep in mind the temple rules and regulations. Right, speech, actions, and bearing, or our demeanor our manners that must be appropriate okay uh, so obviously when we're in the temple uh, there are certain you know proprieties certain rules that we follow uh, uh, so we we need to follow those um, right remember at the beginning it says the Tao is is the, the proprieties and rules following those rules uh, so that's also the Tao um, and so our speech our actions our uh, manners uh, must uh, match match that, right? And it must be appropriate at all times. Okay. Um, so, uh, he says, I, or your brother, you know, he, he's referring to himself, um, <coughs> wield the red pen with responsibility, okay, to record all merits and demerits in detail. Uh, so he is, <coughs> so the chief examiner of three realms, he's kind of like the the class monitor, okay? So he's observing and monitoring the class. Uh, and he, he holds this red pen, <laughs> uh, uh, and he records everything that we do in the during the class, okay? Uh, our conduct, our speech, uh, maybe even what's in our mind, okay? So he says, oh, this person is, is, you know, slacking, you know, he's like slouching, or he's not paying attention, or he's talking when he shouldn't be, you know, then you get red marks, those are demerits. Uh, but if they're doing the right thing, then you get merits. All right, so uh, so those are things. So even though we're not in the Dharma class, but right now we're in an official class, uh, it's the same thing, actually. Okay, so we should always pay attention um, and not just, you know, 
be distracted by things. Yeah, there are a lot of distractions here. Unfortunately, the, the environment may not be perfect, but uh, we do our best, right? Um, respect ourselves, love ourselves, be vigilant, or be on guard all the time, okay? So always be aware. Uh, we can be pleased only when we have merits and no, without any demerits, all right? So uh, again, you know, these merits and demerits, uh, just like our karma is the same thing. We have good karma, bad karma. Uh, we want to obviously have more good than bad, right? Um, because the bad will cause us to have these consequences um, that we're going to cause us to suffer. Uh, okay, so having more merits, again, it's not that we want to have more merits. As long as we do what's proper, then we'll get merit. We'll have merits, right? Um, okay, so uh, we want to encourage each other. Okay, saying brothers and sisters, right? Referring to everyone, to encourage each other. Um, to help each other, we have, <coughs> we must hold Tao dear to ourselves, to our heart, okay, and support and guide each other. Uh, we can use the Tao to, because <coughs> uh, the Tao is really, you know, even like, you know, whether our family or friends, yeah, we may be close to people, but what's even closer to us is the Tao, because without the Tao, we wouldn't be alive, okay. Um, uh, so you can say it's the same thing, it's our Buddha nature, our true nature, that's our, our closest friend, our closest to us. Because that, that's really who we are, actually. Um, uh, so, uh, but, you know, what does that mean? The Tao, the, the principles of the Tao, the truths, okay? Um, so we follow that. What Follow what's that, the truth. Uh, use that to guide us, to support us, and to also, obviously, we are all in this boat together, okay? This, this uh, Dharma boat um, we're cultivating. Um, so we have, we all have this, you can say this karma or affinity, to be here today um, that maybe in past lives you know we you know there was that connection that maybe we were uh, together maybe not all at once but uh, there is that connection that affinity with each with uh, other people in the temple um, that we're here that we can cultivate okay so um, so you know this is cultivation yeah it is you can say it's like a personal journey uh, that we all take uh, but doesn't have to be lonely, all right? So we, we, we help each other, we're here for each other, all right? Uh, we're like one family. Uh, we are originally one family, okay? We all come from the same source. So uh, we're here to help each other, all right? To cultivate, to, to achieve that goal. Uh, this is how each one of us benefits. Um, together we can create a beautiful uh, result, a fine result or achievement, okay? So, so by helping each other, by learning about this Tao, learning about the principles, uh, and and using it to help uh, to help ourselves and help others, uh, then we we can all benefit. <coughs> okay, um, so and then we can all achieve a great uh, result. All right. So the goal of the Tao is uh, it's not just to to for myself, you know, to become a Buddha. Um, you know that that wouldn't that doesn't make sense because a Buddha wants everyone <laughs> to become a Buddha. Okay, so it's not just for myself. So so the ultimate goal of the Tao is to help everyone uh, and to help you know relieve the suffering of, of the world. To to and what Maitreya Buddha you know established his vow or or aspiration is to establish you know harmonious world, heaven on earth. Okay, a paradise on earth. Uh, and so we are part of that actually we are part of that we that is our part of our purpose is to help make that happen right uh, and we can only make that happen through you know ourselves obviously we have to uh, conduct ourselves properly uh, to cultivate our well and then through our own cultivation through our own words and actions to influence those around us and we can introduce the Tao to people uh, and then the more people there are, uh, you know, then obviously those more, there, if there are more people who are cultivating, um, there will be fewer disasters, fewer calamities that are happening, okay? Um, we know there are a lot of calamities in the world, uh, so we need to uh, do our best to help others, uh, to show our compassion, our mercy, and that can then move heaven to, to reduce these calamities. Uh, but of course, these calamities come because of karma, okay? Because of people's hearts and minds are improper, uh, uh, are evil, okay? So, so we want to transform 
people to 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 for the better right uh, okay so uh, so he says okay do we understand all right so he's wielding the pen without discrimination I stand aside hidden but observing carefully okay so uh, that's basically and then he ends the sand writing <coughs> um, so uh, so you know he's always there he's always uh, the, the chief examiner three realms he's present uh, but and he's he's recording everything all right so that's so that's his message uh, which is you know it's good he, you know in the beginning he describes what Tao is right? uh, again that's you know it's kind of a Tao in a nutshell all right so uh, so we can understand that and follow it right the Tao is natural with with no motivation it's mercifulness and it's joyful joyful giving giving it's also abiding by the rules okay so it's not some people think oh Uwe that means I don't do anything or I do anything I want. Uh, you know, follow the whatever my whatever I feel like. Uh, but that's not what's truly natural, what we talk about truly natural. Truly natural is following that Buddha nature, that true nature, that conscience. Okay. Um, and okay, so yeah. So that any questions about this? Hmm? Oh yeah, yeah. So the next <coughs> all right, so after that then we have uh, another okay. So this is a one of the eight immortals. In eight immortals, you know, you can call the uh, uh, Li Tiguai. He's uh, um, he he he. <laughs> His, you know, the, the eight mortals, I mean, there's, you know, I, I, we, we don't have time to talk about that today, but, but uh, he's one of the, there are these eight, um, I don't know, legendary, but I mean, they're, they're real. I mean, they're, they're, they're real people, but he's, he's one of the c a cultivator, okay, so, um, but... 1200 years ago? 13, 12, Yeah, yeah, 14, I don't know. What, no, about, yeah, about 1300 years ago, 1400, 1300 years ago. Yeah. Um, the Tang and Sun Dynasty. Yeah, so the these eight mortals, you know, they, they cultivate in various ways and he's you know, he's let go of forms. I mean he was able, able to let go of the attachment to form and because he was uh, a very handsome person, guy. Uh uh but he, he cultivated it to the point where he, his spirit, you know, he can leave his body and he did and he told his his his, his disciple or whatever to, to you know watch over his body. Uh but uh, Long story short, his disciple ended up, you know, burning his body because he didn't think he was coming back. Uh, and uh, but he did come back a day late. Uh, and unfortunately, so his body was burned. So he he found there was a like a beggar nearby who who was also kind of like crippled, uh, who just died. And so he he kind of <laughs> took over his body. And so uh, so you know he was using his body instead. So you know who was kind of. Not didn't look good, and plus he, he has kind of a, a I, I guess you can say a lame leg. Okay, uh, so it's, so that's why when he channels, he, he kind of walks around kind of with the, with the, with a crutch. Like okay, so uh, so but anyways, uh, that shows that you know, I mean he's willing even to to you know take on a different form, a form that's less <laughs> handsome and less you know functional as what he had before. Uh, so showing that he was able to break off that that attachment to the form, right? So anyway, so here, here's his, uh, he starts, uh, and this channeling is not through San Ray, so this is actually channeling through the, 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 the medium and then talking directly to us, all right. Uh, so he says, Tao must be truly manifested, virtues must be well performed, okay. Um, so the Tao, we have the Tao within us, right. So we say we receive the Tao, uh, that's really saying we receive the three treasures, but the Tao is really a part of us. Uh, like I said, if we if the Tao was not within us, we'd be dead, right? So, so the Tao is within us, and therefore we have to manifest it. We have to understand what that Tao is. It's the Tao within us is that true nature, that Buddha nature, uh, our conscience. Okay, so manifesting that Tao, in other words, following a conscience, uh, practicing our virtues. Okay, as a human being, uh, those are you can say the qualities of the Tao that's within us. All right, so we practice those virtues. Uh, all right, and then so benevolence and righteousness is the treasure of one's moral character. All right. Continue again. Um, page, page four, four right uh, at the top. Uh, okay, so this is again this immortal Li um, giving us the scripture. Uh, so the second line <coughs> says benevolence and righteousness is 
the treasure of one's moral character or you know it's the treasure within okay yeah. so uh, that is you know that's part of our, our true nature our, our Buddha nature uh, you know having benevolence or, or compassion uh, mercy right and, and also righteousness or being up you know upri upright uh, proper okay uh, you know those are part of our true self I and mean, that's who we really if we, if we if we can kind of put aside our emotions, everything else, then that's what we have, okay? That's who we really are. That's how we like, right? <clears throat> so uh, then it says, do not be lacking in genuine knowledge, okay? The, uh, the genuine knowledge being, you know, understanding the truth, the, the this, this Tao, the principles of the Tao, okay? Um, so that is the, the genuine knowledge that we, we need to understand. Um, Okay, uh, so you know how. So that's why we're here. You know, we're to learn these principles so that we can follow them. Uh, we, right, because we, you know, it actually, you know, you can say that this is innate <laughs> that we already have. Uh, if we truly follow our true nature, our Buddha nature, our conscience, then uh, we already know what to do, uh, what's proper. Um, but because we're so used to. The external knowledge and our based on our own biases, our own discriminations, uh, things like that, our you know emotions, whatnot. Uh, because of that, that we don't, you can say that we, we kind of don't follow that that innate uh, knowledge or those virtues or those principles, um, and so that's why we have to kind of relearn it. <laughs> we have to relearn it, but it's really we're relearning. We're learning something that we already have within us. Okay. So this true knowledge actually implies the five constants and the eight virtues. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah. The five con right. I, I mentioned it earlier. You know, <clears throat> benevolence, righteousness, propriety, wisdom, and faith. Or you know, that's true sincerity. Uh, those are the five constant virtues that Confucius talks about in describing that true nature, that or the conscience. Okay. Uh, the eight virtues are what the <laughs> filial piety, brotherhood. brotherhood. Loyalty, loyalty, sincerity, righteousness, integrity, sense of shame. Same, yeah. Integrity. Awesome. Yeah. Integrity. We should integrity. memorize all these because these are the very, very basics yeah. of being a good yeah. human being. Yeah, you can say that the five constants, eight, yeah, eight uh, virtues are from Confucius' point of view. Well, well, <laughs> from his, from his his theory or his perspective is they are you can say components they are some of the intrinsic qualities of our Buddha nature mm -hmm. of our Buddha nature so yes I mean yes you know in, in, in everyday society or in a you know, civilized society you know we we all say oh yeah you know one should be virtuous one should be you know you know all oh, that stuff right <laughs> you know it's really to help us to remind ourselves right, that we have to go back to what's real. It's not that we say this is good, this is virtuous, or this is virtuous. Really, our each one of our human, or, you know, human beings, i.e., our Buddha nature, has that quality. And it's, so, if you are at one, or you know, if you really like truly know this, the principles of Tao, you naturally express that, right? Express those qualities. So, so that's what really it is. Uh, that's why virtue must be well performed. I mean, yeah, it means that you know it must be uh, it must be uh, done. You know, it must be manifested, but manifested in such a way that it's proper. Okay, right? You know, without any motive and all that stuff. You know, but not for show, not for you know pretense and all that stuff. Just natural, right? Mm -hmm. From the from the from the predestined, right? Yeah, right? So from the bottom of the heart. Yeah, the genuine. You know, sincere. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, so we want to, we should embrace this Tao, right, and pursue its practice, okay? Pursuing the practice, again, it's talking about, uh, for us, it's those virtues, uh, following those principles, okay? Um, and, you know, because again, this Tao is really the most precious thing, it's the, it's the ultimate truth, and it's the most precious thing that we have, uh, more than anything else, right? Uh, only then will we have proper, upright appearance, okay? Um, uh, so if we do all these things, uh, cultivate, practice these virtues, uh, to uh, you know manifest it in our speech, in our actions, 
uh, and also, of course, we shouldn't forget in our mind, <laughs> uh, even though, uh, you know, our mind, you know, what we think may not be you know, apparent to other people, but it's apparent to <laughs> heaven and earth, you know, it's apparent to the Buddhas, okay, because uh, everything that goes on in our minds, they can hear, they know, all right, so uh, this should also be proper, all right, uh, so this appearance is not just our external appearance, all right. Um, and then to so to follow okay so follow the oh, okay with addiction to and desire for material things you know how can we be uh, a guide or a leader and be relied upon right so if we are you know addicted to or you know just, <clears throat> just have attachments to uh, and desires to the material things the forms that are constantly changing right uh, then obviously we are changing along with them. Okay, so when they change, we change. Our heart and mind changes, okay, all the time. Humans do that, all right? So we're constantly changing. Um, and so if we're constantly changing and following these things as, as they change, then we cannot lead others to the truth and we can't be relied upon, all right? So, because we're gonna be changing. So the only thing that we can rely upon is something that's constant, okay? That doesn't change. Right. So that's like the truth, the, the, the Tao, all right? So the principles, uh, those are unchanging. All right, so to follow the pure goodness of our original nature is wonderful, splendid. Okay, so, uh, yeah, so our original nature, our true nature, Buddha nature, true self, uh, that is just so marvelous. Um, you know, so we have to, uh, for us, we, it seems like we're, we're standing on the outside trying to look in and to, to see this, this true nature, this marvelous true nature. Um, uh, but uh, actually, eventually, we want to step in, <laughs> get in inside, and, and be looking out from, from that perspective. Uh, be one with that true nature, okay? Don't be separate from it, okay? Yeah, well, it depends. Yeah. See, from the outside, from people looking at you, you well, say, oh, they're thinking you're following something. <laughs> but with yourself, you're saying, I'm being myself, yeah, right, my true right, self. Right, so, right. so, you know, it's the perspective, but it just means that you are at one. Yeah. You know, if you are in accordance with your Buddha nature, it's, you know, it's not like you're, you say, yeah, you can say you're following from the external perspective, but it's really, you're saying you're yeah. one. Yeah, you are, you're, really being your you are, you're being your true you self. You are being your true self. You being your true self. self. Yeah. I mean, you know, so you're not following anything. Right. You're just being your true self. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we're so used to, you know, that, that false, looking at everything from that false self point of view. That's why um, we, we, we kind of lost track of who our true self is. All right. Uh, so okay. So then he, uh, the immortal, in announces himself. Right. I am the eight immortals. Li Teguai, <coughs> by again by God's decree, comes to Tenran Temple and makes obeisance to to Lamu. Okay. So all even the Buddhas and saints, they have to make obeisance, which make the bows, kato to 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 God to Lamu. Right. When they come to the temple. So that's why we do it too. Uh, we have that propriety, right? When we enter the temple, we, we also uh, make the bows to greet uh, God and, and also the Buddhas and saints. Um, so it's, it's no different. Um, and he asks, you know, worthy cultivators, you know, how, how are you? All right. Uh, so they're always very, you know, kind and gentle. Uh, yeah, and this goes back to the, you know, to the sand writing, right? To the, as a number three, the third line, right? So we have to abide by the rules, proprieties, and principles, right? Well, really, you know, it's just, really, he, he, he's even stressing that line. He says, 更是, it's even more so. Yeah. Say, even more so. Right. Even, you know, abiding by the rules is even more so. <laughs> Thou. It's even, you know, previous line, he says, you know, Thou is also right. benevolence, mercy, kindness for humanity, and joy. Then, you know, the first one, Thou is just natural. It's just, right? 就是, just, just, it's like this. Just, but just as, or as, you know, as, as. As okay, so 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 you know you notice they all say yeah you know we have to you know so you say well you know if I'm you know if I'm at one group with myself why do I need to follow rules and regulations it doesn't see once again it's 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 there's an external internal thing again right because if you are if if if, if there's a big if if all of us all of us are and I'm I mean everyone I don't mean I don't mean 99.9 percent .9%, I mean 100 percent no exception if all of us right are enlightened then we behave naturally yeah if we, if, if we are one with our nature then everything will appear natural or you know everything will be 
let, let's say, you know, everybody, you know, will respect each other, love each other, whatever, whatever. It's, it's like utopia, it's like perfection. But then if I was an alien ex looking at you guys and say, hey, yeah, well, you guys are following some kind of rules of respect, you know, propriety, you know, love, see, see, you see what I'm trying to say? So, so from the external, we'll say, hey, yeah, you're following something. I mean, it looks like, you know, in this case, rules, you know, rules or, you know, rules of, of, of your society, whatever, whatever. You, you understand what I'm saying? So, so until, until we get to that point of being, in, of being enlightened ourselves or being at one, you know, we say, oh, we have to follow these things because these things lead us or guide us to that. But when you're in heaven, you know, we say, well, I mean, I, I, it's hard to say. In our heaven, we say there's no rules. That's not true. There are, there are, there are, because there are different levels people, okay? I mean, of, of saying whatever, but actually, you know, it, it's just a perspective, right? If you're one within, if you're looking for, yeah, it's, it's natural, it's the way it should be. If you are, if you are a parent, you should be, what? Loving to your, you know, to your, to your children, right? Right? I mean, if you are a child, you should be respectful or filial to your parents, right? That's natural. But from an external point, you say, oh, you're saying, we're following some rules. You, you're being, we're following filial piety, or you're following, you know, mercifulness, benevolence, love, that type of thing. You see what I'm trying to say? There's a distinction, all right? <coughs> so the idea is, you know, if you become enlightened and we become at one, everything is like just natural. There's no, it's okay. But, but until you reach that point, until you are at one, we say we should be following the rule, the laws, okay? So now, so when Buddha come to this earth, because this is the earthly realm, they too have to follow, but they are actually being, how can I say, at one with God. They, they not know it just naturally would respect God or revere God, but because we're in this human world, they have to perform that ceremony just like we also have to. You, you see what I'm saying? So that's why Buddhists have to do it too. Okay, but because that, but in heaven they naturally are like that. It's just that you know we don't know. It's it's one question of one side, right? External, internal, right? So, yeah. yeah. Well, another way to um, talk about this is, you know, rules and regulations only bother those who do not have you know, this concept, who do not really have a proper mindset, who do not put behave themselves. The poor person who really understand the principles are really enlightened, like Dr. Kai said. Um, it will just spontaneously, uh, spontaneously manifest in their speech, in their in their conduct, in their demeanor. Okay, I think it's the same idea that some people will find all the bowings very uh, cumbersome. Um, they don't want to understand why we do all so many bows in the temple. But for people who understand the real meaning behind the bowing, they will happily do it, no matter how many bows. Yeah, yeah. I, I think what we're trying to get at is, yes, here's the thing. Some people say, oh, I don't need to bow because I already respect in my mind. That, that they always say that. They, they say that. I mean, a lot, lot of people say that. A lot of people say, oh, you know, I already respect it. But then here, here, here's, here's the problem. There, there's a problem with that, that approach or that thinking, that thinking. There, there is a problem. Anybody know what's the problem? Uh, the action doesn't follow uh, what's precisely. in mind. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Your actions don't mesh with what you're thinking, what you're saying. You're saying, oh yeah, you know, I respect you, I respect, I mean, in your mind, but that, that, that's your attitude, your attitude is that. Then show it, you don't show it, you're not showing it. So, so that's, that's wrong, I, that, that's false, because I can say anything, I'm good, I'm good, but I go around and steal things. So, so what good is that? You, you see what I'm trying to say? See, that's the thing. So, right, 你要知行合一, right? Or 言行合一, right? We know of what we understand, we also must do it. You must I.e. express it, manifest it, do it, whatever. Okay, so what you know or what you believe, you must do it. What you say, you must do it. Walk the talk, right? Same thing. So that's why people, you know, who say that, oh yeah, you know, I don't need to bow. I already respect God. <laughs> but you, to, so, so really, in actual respect, those people are delusional. They are really ignorant and delusional because they are what? Inconsistent. They're saying one thing, but they don't do it. You see what I'm saying? Or they're they're thinking one thing, but they don't do it. So that's the problem. That's the problem. So when you say you're being at one, it's natural. You don't have to say or do. I mean, think. It's just natural. It's just boom. You see what I'm saying? 
But then from the external, we say, oh, we follow. You see what I'm saying? Because we're not at that level yet. We're not Buddhist yet. Right? Right? Okay? Yeah. Clear? Clear? Yeah, clear. Yeah, so that's, yeah, that's, <laughs> the, <laughs> so that's the difference between the enlightened uh, yeah. view and the unenlightened view. It's, 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 no, it's, it makes sense now, yeah. right? It makes sense. So we say, oh, you, you should bow. You not understand why. You, even though you say, oh, I respect God already, so I don't need to do it, right? Now you understand, right? I mean, you understand? I hope we understand. Mm -hmm. I hope we understand. <coughs> Actually, when we bow, we're not really bowing yeah, for yes. the Buddha. That, we're that, bowing to ourselves because we all have a Buddha nature within each one of us. So we are actually bowing to ourselves. Yeah, that's part of it. I mean, you know, respecting obviously <coughs> the Buddhas, respecting the enlightened beings, respecting God, also respecting ourselves, our own Buddha nature, because we're all potential Buddhas. Okay, so that's that's you know that's the way the enlightened beings the Buddhas treat us as potential Buddhas, future Buddhas, okay, so, so we should not, um, you know, uh, disrespect our own selves too, all right, uh, okay, so, let's see, uh, oh, okay, so, that, uh, yeah, okay, right, so the immortal, okay, so actually, the, okay, after that, though, the, the immortal actually composed a uh, Marvel, I, I, yeah. It's not here, but I, the marvelous part, of, part of the marvelous scripture. Okay, so this is a block of poetry, uh, which I, we're, we're, I'm going to skip that for now, and we'll, we'll come back maybe probably cover that next week. But um, now uh, this is the next part here is on page five is uh, uh, composed by Jigong, Living Buddha. Okay, our holy teacher. Uh, so what he's he, uh, Okay, so the, so the main theme, right, of that marvelous scripture or this Dharma class is Zizong, okay, those two words, uh, which is, you can say it's military logistics, okay, um, uh, and then so our holy teacher is explaining what that means, right, um, all right. and so he says, you know, Zizong or this military logistics is an army supply chain, right, uh, it's without the critical supplies, right? The soldiers will be incapable of fighting a war. So that, that's, you know, uh, you, you know, you can apply that to like, you know, businesses, right? They have a supply chain um, that they, they get the supplies ordered, you know, and then they have the whole process to get it into their stores, et cetera, and to sell, right? So the same thing. Um, and he says, as applied to a person though, okay, so when we apply the same concept to a person, Right, it's the innate knowledge in, of morals and ethics. So basically, what was described earlier, right? Uh, you know, those principles that we follow, our virtues. You know, uh, that that's what we need to follow. Um, and so, no matter where we go, we cannot even leave it for a moment. Okay. So, uh, just like when we say that if the Tao leaves us for a moment, we're dead. Right. Uh, it, it's the same thing. We because these principles, um, this innate knowledge of the morals and ethics, that's part of the Tao. Okay, within us. All right. So it's part of our true nature, part of our our conscience, part of those virtues, inherent virtues that we have. Right. So if we leave that, then we are no longer. What, what are we? I mean, uh, essentially, you know, we become animals. like animals. <laughs> right. And they don't. They don't have all those virtues. Okay. Uh, I mean, they, they follow their own nature, um, but it, you can say that nature is a subset of a human nature, what yeah. the humans have, okay? So, so if we... You're not complete. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're, not, they're, not, fully human. they're not complete, and that, that's... Half human. Right, so, so then we become like an animal, uh, and so, uh, so that's why uh, we should not become like that, um, and so we should, you know, that's why it's important uh, that, you know, for us to... You can say to cultivate, to achieve, become uh, enlightened. Uh, we have. This is the most important thing that those principles within us, the conscience, the virtues, all right, uh, the, the, or you know, the knowledge of that morals and ethics, uh, and obviously the practice of it. Okay. Uh, so, all right. So then he announces himself. I'm Jigong Living Buddha by. Uh, God's decree, I come to the Tianan Temple and make obeisance to Lao Mu. Okay, so disciples, how are you? Okay, <clears throat> so again, our holy teacher, we're his disciples because uh, he's our enlightening master. I mean, he's the one who transmit the three treasures to us, essentially, through the, through the um, transmitting master. Okay, um, and 
Yeah. Okay. So, so then uh, he composed a song. Okay, he composed a song for us. Uh, says, "Hey, beloved disciple, be more warm and gentle." Okay. Hey, beloved disciple, be more honest and sincere. Okay. So, um, you know, basically, <laughs> right? These are qualities that we should have. You know, being warm, gentle, honest, sincere. Be basically kind, uh, merciful. Um, uh, that's that's what we should be like, right? <clears throat> um, have you seen through the illusion of this world? Or right? Have you already seen? Have right. you already seen, or have you yet seen? Right? It's 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 uh, um it's past. Okay, yeah. Oh, okay. Have you already? already? Yeah. Yet. Yeah. 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 So you know, basically, yeah. So our holy teacher, of course, you know, or any Buddhist, they they want us to to become enlightened, right? So become enlightened, we have to see through the this illusory world. This everything that's in this world is an illusion. It's not permanent. It's not true. Okay. So so see through all the forms, all the material things. Uh, don't be attached to them. Don't desire those things because those are only going to lead us to more karma and, and re reincarnation, right? So we have to see past this illusion. Uh, so no one can persuade time to stop flowing or slipping away, right? Time is, is kind of this arrow that keeps going. Uh, it doesn't stop for anyone. And so we should make the best use of our time uh, while we're, you know, here, right? Uh, and while we are still healthy, that we can do things. Uh, right? There's no choice but to accept it, right? Uh, life's many li d delights and worries or troubles, okay? We have to keep this in mind, uh, uh, but let it go, okay? So all the things that in the world, yes, there are pleasurable things, but then there are also, you know, lots of uh, things that we worry about and lots of, you know, sufferings, if you want, uh, say, or afflictions in life. Uh, but all these ups and downs, everything, eventually we, we have to let go of those, okay? Let go of everything. Um, uh, you know, well, in the end, when we die, we, we have to let go, okay? Uh, but if we don't let go, see, physically we've let go when we die, obviously. But mentally, in our heart and mind, if we still have these attachments and desires, that's going to pull us back, okay? That's just unfortunate. That, that's just part of this nature, okay? The whole principles of nature of cause and well, that's effect. Karma starts yeah, too. consequence. Uh, it, 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 you know, it's a force, right? Don't don't underestimate our mind. It's very powerful. Right? Uh, our thoughts, very powerful. Uh, it's a force. Okay, every thought is a force that will attract us to whatever. All right. So so we have these attachments and desires that's going to attract us to it. And so you know, attract you know, those probably to forms. And so it attract us to those forms. And those forms are in this material world. So obviously uh, we'll end up coming back uh, into this world. Alright, so um, let it go. Alright, so this endless wandering in this world, right, we must, you know, one day, you know, th there's, we should go home eventually, okay? Our home is well, where you can say where the Buddhas are, okay, it's where we originally come from. Uh, we call it heaven or absolute heaven. Uh, but uh, that's where we originally came from, uh, our, our soul, okay, our Buddha nature comes from that. Uh, so we've been wandering about in this world, uh, you know, many, over many lifetimes. We're, we've been visiting, not just, not just as a tourist, but we seem to have, you know, established our home here. <laughs> but uh, this is not our true home, so we should eventually, we, we, we must realize to go home. And so this is the best opportunity that we have, having received the Tao, right now during this time that we live in you know, uh, in this age that we can we can actually do we actually can go home right uh, so I, I I don't know I didn't look up the song I don't, I don't know how it sounds like but it's this melody called eternal harbor or endless harbor I mean eternal harbor yeah uh, you can say eternal harbor it's like we returning back to our eternal home right the harbor is our well, eternal home safe haven right it's like, yeah um, safe haven it's, it's, a, it's a metaphor right yeah. because the buddha says what's life life is like a bitter sea right yeah so we're on the dharma boat now and so we get tossed about by the stormy ocean right like hurricanes that hitting china now right three of them or whatever right mm -hmm. you know so it's because the ocean is always what moving right there's always ups and downs so that's life right just third lines right how many delights, pleasures, and troubles, right? right? There's ups and downs, right? That's part of the eight winds, right? Ups and downs, right? So, so that's life. 
right? No, so now, but why are we why are we so stubborn and, and so obsessed with staying out in the ocean? You know, even though you're on a boat, you still get tossed up. Huh? So the harbor, the eternal harbor, is the place where you, right, find safety, right? Safety from the from the ups and down, the waves, the, the, the stormy sea, right? It's it's a harbor. It's a safety. It's a place of safety, and that's our permanent home, right? So that's where. So you know, no more samsara, right? No more right reincarnation, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So that's a good metaphor. I yeah. mean, so you know, eternal harbors, you know, sounds yeah. more appropriate. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. So now. The the teacher also composed the 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 second half of that marvelous scripture that I'll show you here. So this is the the scripture the scripture that they composed. The the immortal Lee composed the first part up to here up to this point. Okay, on the on the right side, and uh, and on and then the left half was composed by our holy teacher. Okay, so uh, this is why is a marvelous scripture because uh, the within that block of poetry, right, it's all poetry too, it all rhymes, um, is those two red characters, Chinese characters, which is Zizong, which we just talked about, that military logistics, right, uh, and so the way it's composed is, right, they compose from right to left, uh, and again, immortal, the strokes, yeah, Stroke. well, yeah, Stroke well, well, the red part, yeah, is, the red. is following the strokes of the Chinese characters, and then you get the in the scripture within the scripture, okay. Uh, so that's uh, well. That this will probably be talked about next week. But um, the other thing about this is that immortal Lee. Remember the first part that we talked about. Uh, let's see. Let's go back to that. The, the very first thing that he was. Uh, was the immortal Lee. Oh, here, right. This right. This is the first thing that he composed when he when he uh, channeled in. Uh, so the Tao must be truly manifested and virtue must be well performed. Right. That is the scripture within the scripture. So he composed that first. Okay. So before anything else. Uh, so that's what makes us marvelous. Uh, so he composed that the part that was in red. Okay. Uh, these wh whatever the the Chinese characters that are covered by these red strokes, uh, which is over here uh, on the left. Uh, that was composed first by Immortal Lee, and then he started composing this block of characters. And then the second day, uh, Holy Teacher composed the, the second half, and the second, and then the Holy Teacher also pointed out what what these uh, this, these two characters are, these red characters. All right, so that that's also <laughs> that's very marvelous. All right, so it's something that, yeah, I mean, it's it's probably impossible for <laughs> for a person humans to do that. Okay, so this is obviously the Buddhas. They they have infinite wisdom, and, and you know, in their infinite wisdom, they can they can compose these. And it's you know, for them, it's it's it's, it's just it's a cakewalk. <laughs> it's it's easy. <laughs> okay, it's no big deal, right? So uh, so then uh, right, and so basically, you know, immortally, he was kind of uh, explaining what um, let's see. Uh, the content uh, uh, of this, uh, you know, the, the the scripture, and and then holy teacher explain what those those two words mean. Um, all right, so uh, so do we have any questions on what we have talked about so far? Mm -hmm. Maybe you can show the class how the, those two characters were uh, matching all the, the scripture with the scripture. Yeah, I, uh, well, I, I can't show you the, the how, the, the order that was... The insertion point. Huh? Can you blow it up? Uh, let me see if I can make... Oh, here. Um, okay, so for example... Uh, well, actually, okay, it starts. Oh, wait, wait. Start, okay, it starts with the, the left side. Yeah. No, no, wait. It's, it's, oh, sorry. No, it starts here. Huh? Oh, Tao Yao. Okay. Oh, right. So the first one is, well, I don't know if I can't see, but right here, right, the, 
this character here is the first one. The start the stroke oh, yeah, is Dao, Yao, here, Dao. and then it connects to this this character here, Yao. Okay, Dao Yao, and then it, it comes down here, right? No, no. Oh, this one. Sorry. Yeah, this this horizontal stroke. All right, these three characters, and then it goes connects to this Yao, and then goes up to here. The, yeah. Then E nice. Okay, and then it goes back up to top. These three strokes, right? And then down here. Then then book, and then goes back around. Follow this curve. And then yeah, it comes down. Okay. And then right, it's a very <laughs> it could be like a and then it goes and it continues with this other this side here. Um, and then comes across here, right? This this side. Um, uh, and then to Tao Lai Kao. Okay, so anyways, yeah, it follows these the stroke of the the, the the how this thing is drawn. Okay, and then so then that yeah, okay, so then that, that's basically the, the stuff over here, um, the text that's on the left side here. Uh, yeah, so, so, so that's what this is. So those two red characters are, are these two, Zizong, and then uh, these are the ones that are covered by those red characters, right? So, um, and that's what uh, uh, the Immortal Lee had composed. Um, all right. <laughs> yeah. Well, the Buddhists can the do Buddha, anything, pretty much. The Buddhist art. <laughs> so yeah. So in all, each of our Dharma classes, you know, there's the same thing. Uh, they had uh, um, these. You know, in, in New York, in Ohio, in Iowa, in California, they they compose. We have different. Uh, characters in the middle. These, these two, actually, these two words comes from the Tao Te Ching. Okay. Uh, Chapter twenty-six. Um, yeah. Chapter twenty-six. Twenty-six of the of the of the Tao Te Ching, the book of or the classic of what virtue. Yeah. Uh, by Lao Tzu. Okay. So, um, and but yeah. So this is you know. Uh, so this, this is what's uh, pretty amazing, and you know, if you if you want proof of, <laughs> I don't know, the Buddhas, uh, you know, because they're they're not here physically, but you know, in spirit, uh, you know, this is this is one way to to look at as you know proof, if you will, of the enlightened beings um, uh, that they can do this. Um, okay. Each of the sentences, they have to you know, make logical progression, right, in the idea. Yeah. And also, at the end of each line, there's a real right. running scheme, right? And also, you know, all these uh, scripture is in there to, 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 to set out your two characters. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so it's, it's all, I mean, it's... Uh, uh, the, it's, I don't know. It's, it's just um, pretty amazing. Um, and so, the, you know, all this just to to now. I, I guess you can say, you know, why why did the Buddhas need to do something like this? Uh, you know, to show us. I mean, because people today, especially right today, there is lacking in faith. <laughs> people are lacking in faith, and so they need to see something that's like, wow. This is this is something that's really. Uh, you know, unusual, something amazing that 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 a normal person cannot do. Okay, and and so yeah, you can say, well, they do it for that purpose. So those who there's because if people obviously if they have that faith already, there's no need to see something like this. You know, because you already have that faith. But those because we live in a world of science, technology today, and people are are you can say they put their faith in science and technology and and, and things that are you know observable things that they can see and so this is something 
you can say that you know the Buddhas uh, give us so that we can see uh, that they can see that oh okay yeah this is something special this is not an ordinary uh, it's like an ordinary you know you can pick up a lot of books today and, and on stuff but but this is you won't be able to find a book like this okay that has something like this in it uh, so this is something special to show yeah there, there is something uh, that's beyond uh, the, the physical the material uh, world there is a spiritual world uh, that exists uh, and that that spirit is 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 well you know the Buddha nature is is all is so marvelous so amazing right with the class about what happened during the Dhamma class when Holy Teacher was there and we were also having a Dhamma receiving ceremony in which uh, transmitted this one that we didn't know. Uh, no, we oh, didn't share. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it might have been I remember. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know, we... <laughs> You know, because we, we rely so much on our physical senses that what we can see, you know, if I'm in, you know, we're in that room, we're not going to see outside the walls of that room. Uh, but obviously the Buddhas, they're everywhere at once. Okay? You can say that they're everywhere at once. Okay, so they're aware of everything going on anywhere uh, at, at once, even maybe in the past and future. But, uh, you know, so the, during the Dharma class here, uh, the Jigong Buddha, right, he, he channeled, and, and there was just a Tao receiving ceremony on this side over here. Uh, and the uh, transmitting master, because of the, I don't know, <laughs> there was a little bit of chaos going on, but there were interruptions, things. Uh, so, so part of the procedure was missed, okay, uh, during the Tao receiving ceremony. And the so, most important one. Yeah, the most important one. And so uh, afterwards they were done, and then they went inside, and Holy Teacher was already channeled in. Uh, and Holy Teacher just reminded the transmitting master that he skipped a step, right? That he, he missed the most important point, uh, the, the, the point transmission, <laughs> okay? Uh, transmission of first treasure. And so, you know, that, that was amazing, right? So the, the Holy Teacher, obviously the Buddhas, they can everything. They know what's everything that's going on. So even though they've channeled in, right? They, they're, they're beyond the physical, okay? Uh, even though we see them as, oh, this, they, they're borrowing the, the medium, the child, the, the you know, ladies, uh, the body, uh, but they're, they're not confined to that physical being, okay? Because they're, they're already one with everything, all right? So, uh, so they're not limited to that. Uh, uh, just like we are, we're kind of limited. But if we cultivate well, actually, we can get to that, you know, the higher level we cultivate, the more that we become one with everything okay uh, we expand that self so that you know lecture Liu in Taiwan talks about uh, doing the practice you know letting go of all karmas affinities and, and not giving rise to a single thought that's one of the practice to to help us expand the awareness of our Buddha nature okay let it expand beyond our physical self right if we can expand beyond our physical self obviously that awareness then is goes beyond our what our senses can can tell us okay so, uh, so it's not that we're seeking some superpower. It just comes naturally. All right, that's just natural. Our, our in, a, in essence, right now, our it seems like our Buddha nature is just confined within this physical body, right? So, so we depend on our eyes to see. Uh, but if our Buddha nature can expand out outward, and you know, if it covers a bigger space, you know, then maybe you can be aware of things that are outside that beyond our vision, beyond our senses. Okay. So that, that's very natural. So that's, the Buddhas have achieved that, that, you know, their Buddha nature expands, you can say, the whole universe, <laughs> the whole cosmos, okay? So there's nothing beyond what they are aware of. They're, they're aware of everything, all right? So um, that's just, so you can say we, that's truly enlightened. If we practice the daily routine of letting go of our karma and affinity, we too can get into that state of becoming one with the universe. Yeah. Okay, so the more you do, eventually it will happen. Yeah, I mean, but we have to, you know, as part of that, you know, we have to let go of our attachments to things, uh, let go of attachments to our ego, <laughs> let go of the ego, get rid of that ego, that's the most important thing. Because everything you can say comes from that false self or that ego, that sense of self. Uh, if we can let go of that, then we won't have those attachments, we won't have those desires. Uh, and those, are because the attachments and desires are, you can say, they're linked to our physical senses. They're linked to our physical senses. 
And so, therefore, if they are, you can say, coming from our physical senses, then they are obviously very limited. So we, that's very limiting. And so, letting go of those, those attachments and desires, then we break that limit, uh, break those limits, and and go beyond, uh, and really let our Buddha nature truly uh, manifest itself uh, and, and become one with everything. Okay, so. Yeah, we can only become one with everything if there is no me and everything else, right? Self versus everything that's outside the self, right? Um, it's only because we have that separation, we believe that there's a separation, uh, uh, that there is that limit, okay? So breaking the barriers, we get rid of that self, then we are just one with everything. And so there is no separation anymore, right? Uh, so that awareness then is we are aware of everything, okay? We are, are one with everything, okay? So in anything we do, we can start, we obviously we start, you know, somewhere. We start small and everything that we do, every little thing, uh, uh, you know, I always say that the Tao is, you know, when you become one with whatever you're doing, okay? Uh, and then you can do that well, do it very well, okay? Uh, because there is no longer that that you can say there's a limitation. There's a an obstacle in the way when, when there's a separation uh, So you can fully become it so if you're driving you are one with the car and you are you know So then you are in full control of the car uh, and also be fully aware of everything that's going on around you So you don't get into an accident things like that, right? So so that applies to everything we do right? Okay, any? So the uh, superpower is actually something that our Buddha nature or, you know, kind of uh, enables us, right? Um, but we talk about that as being superstitious. The real superstition is that when we, we just bow to Buddhas and Saints and pray for whatever we want, but we are not doing anything on our part. That's real superstition. And if we we really cultivate well, we don't have any more attachments to the earthly matters, um, then we become light. We don't have anything like you know, wealth, power, status, you know, all these material things that's good. Pulling us down like a gravitational force. You know, that's why um, I think it's um, the teaching of the uh, the half, right? Gives, uh, gives the scripture, the light will rise up. The light doesn't, you know, just means that you know, we are skinny or thin. It's that it means that we are we are free of any obstruction. We are free of any attachment to world matters. Okay. Um, all right. Yeah. So you know that's uh, so that's why we're here. You know, we, we, we learn all these things that maybe we didn't know about before. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so you know, these are. I mean, this is the truth. I mean, uh, you know, we're, it's not something that uh, we just came up with. Uh, you know, the Buddhas, they've achieved, okay, uh, and they've achieved enlightenment. And so, you know, they're just teaching us how do we get there t ourselves. Uh, and so they're very, obviously, unselfish. They're, 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 they're you know, otherwise, you know, they, <laughs> they don't have to teach us. I mean, they, they achieved it themselves, and that... That, that could be it, uh, then we'd be left to suffer ourselves. But they, they want us to become enlightened too. So um, we, you know, obviously we have to be grateful. Um, always be grateful in life uh, you know, for all the things we have, even all the bad things that we have. It's due to our own karma that we created in previous lives. Uh, but uh, if, as long as we are grateful, um, then that karma will pass. That, you know, having that proper attitude is very important. Right? Attitude is you can say it's kind of it's almost everything uh, you know what's in our mind is everything really um, and that can help us to to overcome those those obstacles uh, that come along all right if we are grateful we're sincere um, in, in in accepting you know what happens uh, and obviously trying to we always need to self-reflect uh, don't blame others all right we look within and then we can, and, and obviously we don't fight, try to fight these things. Um, it doesn't mean that, oh, if, 
something happens due to karma, like, you know, a lot of, like, cancers, okay, that's due to karma. Uh, but we can accept it, and we don't, I mean, when we say don't fight it doesn't mean that we don't take medication, things like that. No, of course you can do that. Uh, but to accept uh, and not dwell on that, on the negativity of, you know, having some illness. Uh, but always be positive. That's that's very helpful attitude to, to overcome it, um, or at least, you know, to get through, uh, to help us to cultivate. And, and as long as we're doing things, helping others, um, you know, then eventually that, that karma will be resolved. Um, but if we, obviously, we try to fight it in a negative way, go, uh, then we just perpetuate the karma, or we, you know, extend it, um, and that just extends the suffering, right? So, um, so yeah, we, you know, we can't let our human emotions get, get in there. When we have our, we follow our human emotions, then, you know, be upset and, and all that, uh, and that's, that negativity is not good. Uh, uh, for if we want to get better, right? Um, uh, and you know they they have done through studies. They know that having a positive and optimistic mindset helps. Actually, uh, there was a cancer patient on the news. On the news, I didn't make this up. Okay, fourth uh, stage of cancer, last stage. A young woman with little children. I think four kids, three or four kids. Still, you know, pretty young. Now, the doctor says you don't, maybe three months or six months, I don't remember the exact time. But she maintained in her heart and mind a very positive attitude. She does her days the same way. She lives her days the normal life. Doesn't think about her cancer. Okay. She overcame it just with a positive attitude. Today, it's over 10 years for her. Okay, so just to show you, stage four cancer, now she's living a normal life. That's very important. But if you have a negative attitude or outlook on everything, all that negativity will follow you. Okay? Yeah. So that's the difference between positive and negative. Yeah, again, I, I mentioned that the mind is very powerful, our thoughts are very powerful, our mindset, you know, the, our attitude, very powerful, uh, don't underestimate it. So if we think positive, positive things come to us. If we think negative, negative things come to us. So if, even if we're healthy, we're always thinking negative thoughts, something bad is going to happen, okay? So uh, it is, okay? So whatever is in our mind will attract, you know, whatever, okay? Whether it's good or bad. Uh, depends on what's in our mind. So, uh, because that is the power of, it's not really the mind, it's the Buddha nature, okay? It's very powerful. Uh, and so, uh, just keep that in mind. Um, so it's always good, obviously, we think positive, think negative, uh, think, think optimistic, uh, then good things could happen, okay? I'm not saying guaranteeing that, oh, you know, <laughs> we think positive, everything's, always good things happen to us, but, uh, but at least if negative things, bad things happen, it'll allow us to, to get through it um, uh, more easily.